move over CNN because there is a new TV channel in town and it's SCTV. And I am joined by the founder of this new cannabis television network, Josh Otten. So tell me what was the genesis of this idea to bring together, I guess, all the cannabis videos that are out there from all the various content creators. Yeah, so we uh, we were able to operate with the previous library I had built at Prohibited uh, over the last year with Viacom on Pluto TV, uh, where we had about 40 hours of original programming, and it did very, very well. Uh, the thing that struck us was we generated about 70 million minutes watched in the year, uh, and the average view session was almost 35 minutes. And so if you look at that and compare that to Facebook or Instagram, which is around 10 seconds, uh, it was it was you know, sort of striking. Um, and I think the reason was because we had broadcast quality content. So it was an average of almost 12 to 15 minutes long, multi-camera. It, it, it was purposefully created to live on a linear television or on-demand environment and the audience responded. And so in that way, we realized that in order to expand on what we started here, it was important for us to launch our own network and so we created Social Club TV, launched it actually last week, and already it's been performing very well. And where can people find this? So it sounds like you've got it on a couple of different places. Yeah, so uh, you can literally open up your uh, iOS, your, your, app, your uh, excuse me, iPhone, uh, Android phone, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Just type in Social Club TV and you'll get it. Um, and then we're going to be launching on Amazon Prime and probably uh, start a Q2, uh, Amazon Fire. Uh, we just are going to be re ready to launch a new block of programming with uh, Pluto TV on their THC channel. So we're going to have the Social Club Smokeout, which is exciting. And we're going to have a bunch of new programs, including um, uh, new, new, new Marijuana Mania with Burner. Uh, we're launching Pimp My Grow with DNA Genetics. Uh, we have a bunch of whole, a whole, whole bunch of new programs. It's fun. So, who is deciding on the content and the timing? Because it, it sounds like there's a lot of cultural content, but do you anticipate um, news organizations coming in? Do you anticipate maybe I don't know drama type of of content? Yeah. So, you know, um, we, we don't want to be monolithic. We don't want to sit there and have every episode just has cannabis in it or any just about, um, you know, smoking or cons how to consume cannabis. So we have different categories. We're going to have educational content. We're going to actually have an entire health and wellness category. That's going to be uh, working with a lot of different hemp brands and people in the wellness and um, uh, nutraceutical and botanical environments. Um, we are going to have a news uh, channel. We won't be creating too much news content ourselves necessarily, but we want to partner with uh, companies like yourself and uh, get you guys uh, on here to, to have an audience. Um, and I, I want to go beyond that. You know, it's fun. I was talking to um, a partner of ours and, uh, you know, he was going, you know, he's talking about different conspiracy theories and uh, this was a, this happened. And, and I love it because I was like, you know, cannabis consumers love conspiracy theories, aliens, all kinds of fun stuff. So we're going to do um, we're going to definitely go much broader and, and, and try to have documentaries, feature films, and different categories as well. You know, I think that this is a really great idea because um, as a cannabis content creator, one of the reasons, you know, I started Green Market Report was because I didn't like the type of news, uh, financial news that I was seeing on cannabis in the mainstream media. I was tired of seeing reporters giggle and make weed puns and I, I, I rolling her eyes and, yeah. and, and I really um, feel like that's also you know what we see with some of the other content that is created around cannabis is you see a lot of stoner stereotypes and, and yes that is part of it and and I'm certainly not putting that down we all love some of those characters but there's so much more to it like you said with the wellness and and there's just such a broader uh, array of stories there that I think that that's going to be great that you'll have that type of programming. So, you know, it's funny. The origination of fake news had nothing to do with Donald Trump. The origination of fake news had to do, you can go all the way back to yellow, the, you know, yellow journalism, quote unquote, where um, they were talking about how hemp and cannabis yep. was this scourge and it was coming from 
you know, South America and Mexico, and it was doing and the devil's weed and the devil's lettuce. That was the origination of fake news. And it started uh, not because of the, even the government. It started under capitalism and it started under uh, William Randolph Hearst wanting to uh, own, uh, uh, you know, the entire um, ecosystem of printing. And so he wanted to make sure that uh, hemp farmers weren't going to be able to compete against his logging to literally create a uh, print journalism. And so he decided that the, the only way to do this was to um, use this fear-based tactic. And because he owned the media at that time. So the question becomes, how do you guys monetize this? What is yes. the plan for that? So we have advertising on supported. So we are working with both mainstream and hemp brands. Um, we are um, allowing uh, content creators and branded content creators to create premium channels on the platform. That's going to guarantee them views, guarantee them exposure, and allow them to control their own ad inventory. So if they want to make sure that uh, they can sort of promote uh, their products or services to customers. And then in Q2, we're going to be launching a subscription VOD for people that want to watch ad free and as well as allowing some of our premium content creators to create exclusive content. You know, our, our pitch is, you know, when we go to a content creator who's building their audience off of YouTube and uh, you go there and you see that 95% of your content is just not being watched anymore and no one's digging through your archives because Google wants to just keep you, you know, going through their algorithm. Yeah. Number one, hey, look, we're, we're here to help you, you know, sort of number one, monetize and surface your older content, which is still looks good and evergreen. And number two, we're here to help you make a lot more money because we're going to get 18 to $20 CPMs, whereas, you know, YouTube might be giving you four to five. And I have to ask, so is the company bootstrapped? Do you guys have venture cap money? How are you getting this endeavor off the ground? So we bootstrapped it to, to date. So um, we launched in July. Um, we've, we've, you know, we've got a nice uh, roster of, of client services. Ronin is, as an agency has been up and running. And so we do uh, agency services, uh, but we are going out to seek funding actually uh, next week is going to be our first uh, seeking of funding. So um, we are looking to do a small raise uh, mostly to invest in content acquisition, content distribution. Um, the technology is already built. It's already up and live. It's working now. So it's more about scaling. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to go and check out the offering, see what you have out there. I, again, this is Josh Otten with SCTV, and I'm Deborah Borchardt with the Green Market Report. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Deborah.